In this session, we're going to be reading a book about dragons. This book about dragons was written by an author whose name is T. Albert. There's his name down at the bottom of the front page. The author is the person who wrote the book. Sometimes there is an illustrator. The illustrator is the person who creates the pictures. These pictures were created by this company, MailIllustrations.com. Sometimes the pictures are illustrated by a person and their name would be there instead. So the author wrote the story and the illustrator created the pictures that go with it. Before we begin, what dragons have you seen or have read about in books, in films, or on TV shows? Were they helpful or were they scary dragons? What types of powers did they have? What were they able to do? Did the dragons hold treasure? Let's read the book and find out about dragons from different parts of the world. Let's turn the page. Let's read some fun facts about dragons. In Greek, dragon means a huge snake or a water snake. A dragon is an imaginary animal. There are many popular stories about dragons in countries all over the world. In most European stories, dragons are evil creatures, but Chinese folk tales are mostly about kind and helpful dragons. Is that a similarity or a difference? That's right, it's a difference. In Europe, the dragons are often evil, and in Chinese stories, the dragons are often kind and helpful. The dragons you know, would they be more likely to be European dragons or dragons from China? Would they be helpful or evil dragons? Let's turn the page. Chinese dragons. The Chinese love dragons. They believe that the dragon is powerful and wise and brings good luck. There are many temples built to honour the dragons in China. Chinese dragons are snake-like, wingless animals with four legs and five claws on each leg. One, two, three, four, five. According to stories, Chinese dragons have a magic pearl, which gives them the power to fly and go into heaven. So Chinese dragons get their powers from the magic pearl. Can you find the pearl in this picture? That's right, there it is. The dragon is holding it in its claws. Let's count the claws together. One, two, three, four, five. The Chinese also believe that dragons control water, rainfall, hurricane, and floods. Let's turn the page. Korean dragons. Looking at the picture, what similarities and what differences can you see between the Korean dragon and the Chinese dragon? Let's read and find out. Korean dragons are the most kind-hearted of all the dragons. A Korean dragon is a snake-like wingless animal with a long beard. A Korean dragon has four legs with four claws on each leg. In Korean stories, dragons are water animals which control water and farming. Let's count the claws. One, two, three, four. Four claws on each foot. Let's count them all. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
13, 14, 15, 16. 16 claws. We can also count in fours. 4, 8, 12, 16. Let's see what's on the next page. Japanese dragons. Japanese dragons are large, wingless, snake-like animals with three claws on each foot. Japanese believe that dragons are water animals that control rainfall and water. According to Japanese stories, dragons were first born in Japan. Dragons are very popular in Japan and are used in a lot of art, music and architecture. This is a very long dragon. Let's have a look at the next page. Indian dragons. What differences do you notice about this picture and the pictures that we've already looked at? That's right. This dragon looks like a snake with a human's body on the top. Let's read about Indian dragons. Indian dragons are wingless animals that are half snake and half human. Indian dragons are called Nagas and are said to live in an underground kingdom. In Indian stories, Nagas are found in rivers, lakes and seas and they are believed to be guardians of great treasures. Do you know any dragons that have been guardians of treasures? And what types of treasures were they guarding? Let's turn the page. Filipino dragons. What differences can you see between this picture and the pictures we've seen already? What type of dragon do you think this one is? Do you think this is a good dragon, or do you think this one would cause problems? Let's read. The Filipino dragon is called Bakunawa, which means moon eater. According to an ancient story in Philippines, Bakunawa is a snake-like dragon with whiskers, two pairs of wings, a red tongue, and a mouth as big as a lake. In the story, the Bakanawa lived in the sea and would rise out of the water into the sky and eat the moon. Thus, the Filipino dragons were believed to be the cause of eclipses. Let's turn the page. Welsh dragons. Have you seen a picture of a Welsh dragon? Or a model? Have you been to Wales? What type of dragon do you think this would be? Would it be a helpful dragon? Would it be a dragon that guards treasure? Or would it be a dragon that fought a knight? The flag of Wales has a red dragon in a green and white field. The flag tells the story of the red dragon which saved Wales from the icy white dragon but died after the fight. The Welsh flag was made to honour the red dragon and remember him forever. So the Welsh dragon saved Wales. He was a very helpful dragon. Let's turn the page. Greek dragons. What do you notice about this picture? That's right. This dragon has lots of heads. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The most famous Greek dragon was the Hydra, which was killed by the Greek hero 
Hercules. The Hydra was a nine-headed snake-like water dragon with poisonous breath and blood. It had the power of regeneration. It grew two new heads for each head that was cut off. In this Greek story, the dragon was killed by Hercules, who burnt its neck stumps to stop any new heads from growing. Have you seen a hydra in a book or a movie that you've watched? What type of dragon was the hydra? Let's turn the page. English dragons. In most English stories, dragons were evil animals. They lived in dark caves, guarded great treasure, and fought with English knights. English dragons have four powerful legs and claws, scales on its body, huge wings, and a sharp tail. They have fangs, poisonous breath, and breathe fire. Let's turn over. Russian dragons. In Russia, a dragon was believed to have three heads, which could grow back if cut off. Hmm. Can you think of any other mythical animals whose heads grew back if they were cut off? In popular Russian stories, dragons were green, walked on two back paws, had small front paws, and breathed fire. Scandinavian dragons. The most evil among all dragons is the Scandinavian dragon, Nidhogg. He is a huge, multicolored, wingless dragon who lives underground. In the Norse story, this 30 foot snake like dragon keeps eating the roots of the world tree, Idrasil. This is dangerous for Earth because this is the tree that keeps the universe safe. What do you notice about this dragon? That's right, he's got lots and lots of legs. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen legs that we can see. Let's turn the page. Bhutanese dragons. The Druk is the thunder dragon of Bhutanese stories. This dragon is the national symbol of Bhutan. The thunder dragon is a giant snake-like wingless animal with four legs and scales on its body. The flag of Bhutan has a Druk and the Bhutanese people call their country Druk Yul, land of Druk. Let's turn over. That is the end of our book about dragons, written by T. Albert, the author, and illustrated by this company. I hope you enjoyed looking at the pictures and can think about what were the similarities and differences between the dragons we've looked at today and the dragons that you've seen or read about.